Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with falafel. That's right, falafel is one of those rare foods like french fries and pizza that pretty much everybody loves. In fact, when I meet someone that doesn't like falafel, I have to admit I'm a little suspicious. I mean, what's not to like about this crispy deep fried chickpea fritter? And while I don't think there's much danger in this video, putting your friendly local neighborhood falafel stand out of business, this really did come out quite well, and I think you're going to be surprised how easy it is. So let's go ahead and get started with the star of the show, garbanzo beans. Also known as chickpeas, or as my family called them growing up, chichi beans. And for the amount I'm making, I'm going to use one generous cup of dried garbanzo beans. And check them out, they have a very cool appearance. They look like little shriveled up, let's say brains. And what we need to do is soak these before we use them. So pro tip, if you want to make this today, make sure you do this step yesterday. All right, because what we need to do is cover these in cold water and let them soak at least overnight. Personally, I think 24 hours is better, but overnight should be fine. So like I said, we'll cover those with a few inches of cold water and we'll put that in a place where there's a pretty good chance it won't get knocked over. And as long as you've covered those with enough water, the next day they should look something like this. And then what we'll do at this point is drain those very, very well before we transfer that into our food processor and add the rest of the ingredients. All right, a blender will work sort of okay. And yes, you can make this by hand by crushing or chopping, but that's gonna take significantly longer. So try to find a food processor. I guarantee one of your married friends has one. Just borrow it for a day. Tell me you're gonna make it worth your while with falafel. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and dump in our now very well drained beans, to which I'm gonna add some diced onion. And by the way, even though this is gonna get processed, I think it mixes more evenly if you start by cutting the onion nice and small first. So I'm gonna add in about half an onion, along with a whole bunch of minced garlic, we're also going to need a whole bunch of freshly chopped Italian parsley. Some people also like to use cilantro here, or a combination. We're also going to need some salt, as well as some freshly ground black pepper. We're also going to throw in a spoon of ground cumin, or cumin, as I believe it's supposed to be pronounced, as well as a little bit of ground coriander. And then we're going to shock the world by putting in a little pinch of cayenne, as well as a small touch of baking soda. No, not powder, baking soda, and a spoon of flour. Just a little, not too much. Okay, one of the big decisions with a falafel mix is do you want it more bready or more beany? And I prefer beany. So personally, I don't want to put too much flour here. And then last but not least, we're going to squeeze in a little bit of lemon juice. And that's pretty much it. And do you need to give it a mix like this before you process it? Probably not. I'm not sure why I did that, but it's too late now. But anyway, once all your ingredients are together, we're simply going to process this, pulsing on and off to start, of course. And what we want to end up with here is something that's pretty finely ground, but not a puree. All right, we don't want to liquefy this or turn it into a really fine paste. And with something like this, it's always a great idea about halfway through to take a little break, take off the lid, take a spatula, kind of scrape everything down off the sides, give it a little mix in case there are any large rogue chunks refusing to get mixed in. So I did that and recommend you do the same thing. And we'll continue to blitz that until, like I said, we have a very finely ground mixture. And instead of trying to think of a very clever way to describe it, let me just show you. This is what I think you want. All right, very finely ground, but not pasty. So we don't want to go too far, but it does have to be ground fine enough to hold a shape because we're going to form these into balls and or other shapes soon. So that's looking good. And at this point, we can transfer that to a bowl and kind of press it and pack it down. And then what we want to do is cover this and let it sit for an hour or two before we start forming our falafel. And yes, I have done these without letting it rest, and it does work. But by sticking it in the fridge for an hour or two, those flavors really are going to meld together. And it's going to be a little easier to work with, which is never a bad thing. So I did pop mine in the fridge for a couple hours, after which we're ready to shape. And I'm just going to make some small balls. I'm going to use one of these little sorbet scoops, which not only gives me the shape I want, but it also ensures these are about the same size each. And by the way, one tip, if you moisten your fingers, these are a lot easier to work with. In fact, there's an old saying in the falafel industry, damp hands make smooth balls. And it really is true. All right, so we're going to form our falafel into the shape of our choice. And at that point, they're ready to fry. So we're going to cook these in 350 degree oil for roughly five minutes. And of course, that time's going to vary with your size and shape. But for the ones I did here, five minutes was just about perfect. And I'm just playing with them here. You don't have to do this. I was just bored, so I gave them a stir. But like I said, we're going to cook those for about five minutes, at which point they should look like this. Beautifully browned and crispy on the outside. Oh yeah, those look done. So we'll transfer those onto a rack to cool for a minute. And we'll take a bite so you can see that gorgeous inside. Look at that beautiful color. And right here you can get a real good look at that texture inside. It shouldn't be too wet, it shouldn't be too dry. It should have the texture of falafel. And as you saw in our last video, I served these with some tahini sauce as a dip, which is just a very simple and very beautiful way to serve them. And I hear you out there, those look amazing. But Chef John, I don't have a deep fryer. 
There's no way I could do these. Well, I got some great news. You don't need a deep fryer. Instead of making balls, just flatten them out into patties and pan fry them for a couple minutes per side. It works beautifully. And they really do come out just as gorgeous. And as you're about to hear, just as crispy. And not only does that technique work, but if you're going to toss yours into a pita to make the traditional falafel sandwich, that shape actually works better. So I threw a couple in a pita, which I generously swiped with hummus, with some diced tomato, cucumber, and onion, and of course finished it with a drizzle of tahini. And that, my friends, for a sandwich that was not invented in America, is incredible. Just one of the all-time great fast foods of the world. And I know that's a concept that's hard for a lot of people to grasp. Healthy, delicious, and beautiful fast food. But anyway, that's it. I'm going to go finish the rest of that off. And I really hope this demo inspired you to give these a try. And what if it doesn't? I'm not going to lie. I'll feel awful. You know, some of these puns just write themselves. But seriously, I really do hope you give these a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.